Hello, I welcome you to St. John's United Church. This Sunday in the church year is the reign of Christ. Christ the King, in some places it's called. It is the final Sunday for the church year. The church year ends this Sunday and then begins a new church year with Advent. Advent is the preparation for the birth of Christ and the Christmas celebration. I, I wanted to let you know about that for a couple of reasons. One is because I'm going to try to focus a little bit of every message on the liturgy, the lectionary, the, the church year. Because part of the reason for the church year is just to remind ourselves of the story, and it goes through a process where it ends with this Sunday, the, the reign of Christ, that Christ reigns, God reigns. I hope you don't mind, but you're kind of getting a mini sermon now before the message, which is actually going to be from Lori Whitney, and it's going to be just telling about a bracelet and that and, and the meaning behind it. But if I may just take a little of her thunder, the, the, even the bracelet has colors in that that she'll explain to you. And these colors are to help remind us of things. And it's very similar to the way of the church and the church year. We have different colors. If you haven't noticed in some churches here at St. John's, we use different colors. I'm going to try to incorporate those colors even in the video as we move forward and try to make each one match with what the church year is. So the reign of Christ is white. White is for purity, uh, the purity of Christ. And what I was going to mention to you, saying a little bit of a mini sermon here, is that this idea of the reign of Christ goes back to the Old Testament. I was once asked in a, in a conference, and, and others were asked, we were in a large conference, and, and we were all asked, what is the message of Jesus Christ? What is the message of Jesus Christ? Now, you have to remember, almost everyone at this conference was, I, was either a minister or someone who was in some sort of ministry. And no one was coming up for, with the answer. And, and for some reason, not saying this to brag, but for some reason, I started going through the Gospel of Mark in my head. I had been memorizing it just something I decided to do. And as I was going through it, I came to the first time that Jesus really gives his message. And, and, and I put up my hand and I said, the message of Christ is repent for here is the kingdom of God. God reigns. God reigns. And this goes back to Isaiah and this is the message of Christ. God reigns. It's not that these other things that ministers and probably you might be thinking too, well, what's the message of Christ that God forgives us? Absolutely that God loves us, absolutely. These are all true things of the gospel message, but his message at the beginning and his message throughout was, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, or God reigns. And in fact, because we believe Jesus is God come in flesh, we can say, Jesus reigns. Christ is king. And it's why when we, we live our lives, we should always live it in, in not only anticipation of what is to come, but live it in the reality that right now, as I speak, as you listen to this, as you go out into the world, God reigns. No matter what you see, no matter how bad things get, no matter all the things that go on, the truth remains. God reigns. May each one of you know that in your lives. May this worship help to enhance that knowledge for you. As we end the church year, may we be reminded that no matter what happens, and we've had some strange things this year, God reigns. The Lord bless you. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things to your beloved Son, whom you anointed priest forever and King of all creation, grant that all the people of the earth now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Psalm 95, verses 1 to 7. Come, let us praise the Lord. Let us sing for joy to God who protects us. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs of praise. For the Lord is a mighty God, a mighty king over all the gods. He rules over the whole earth, from the deepest caves to the highest hills. He rules over the sea which he made, the land also which he himself formed. Come, let us bow down and worship him. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. He is our God, we are the people he cares for, the flock for which he provides. Ezekiel 34, verses 11 to 16, and verses 20 to 24. I, the Sovereign Lord, tell you that I myself will look for my sheep and take care of them in the same way as shepherds take care of their sheep that were scattered and are brought together again. I will bring them back from all the places where they were scattered on that dark, disastrous day. I will take them out of foreign countries, gather them together, and bring them back to their own land. I will lead them back to the mountains and the streams of Israel and will feed them in pleasant pastures. I will let them graze in safety in the mountain meadows and the valleys and in all the green pastures of the land of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will find them a place to rest. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. I will look for those that are lost, bring back those that wander off, bandage those that are hurt and heal those that are sick. But those that are fat and strong I will destroy, because I am a shepherd who does what is right. So now I, the Sovereign Lord, tell you that I will judge between you strong sheep and the weak sheep. You pushed the sick ones aside and butted them away from the flock. But I will rescue my sheep and not let them be mistreated any more. I will judge each of my sheep and separate the good from the bad. I will give them a king like my servant David to be their one shepherd, and he will take care of them. I, the Lord, will be their God, and a king like my servant David will be their ruler. I have spoken. 
Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 15 to 23. For this reason, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks to God for you. I remember you in my prayers and ask the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give you the Spirit who will make you wise and reveal God to you so that you will know him. I ask that your minds be open to see his light so that you will know what is the hope to which he has called you, how rich are the wonderful blessings he promises his people, and how very great is his power at work in us who believe. This power working in us is the same as the mighty strength which he used when he raised Christ from death and seated him at his right side in the heavenly world. Christ rules there above all heavenly rulers, authorities, powers, and lords. He has a title superior to all titles of authority in this world and in the next. God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme Lord over all things. The church is Christ's body, the completion of him who himself completes all things everywhere. Matthew chapter 25 and verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes as King and all the angels with him, he will sit on his royal throne and the people of all the nations will be gathered before him. Then he will divide them into two groups, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the righteous people at his right and the others at his left. Then the king will say to the people on his right, Come you that are blessed by my Father, come and possess the kingdom which has been prepared for you ever since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me, in prison and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him, When, Lord, did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you in our homes, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, Whenever you did this for one of the least important of these followers of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Away from me, you that are under God's curse, away to the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, but you would not feed me, thirsty, but you would not give me a drink. I was a stranger, but you would not welcome me in your homes, naked, but you would not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you would not take care of me. Then they will answer him, When, Lord, did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and we would not help you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you refuse to help one of these least important ones, you refused to help me. These then will be sent off to eternal punishment, but the righteous will go to eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Browse through the hymnal of any Protestant denomination, and you will find one name appearing on dozens of well-known hymns. Hymns like Hark the Herald Angels Sing, O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, Jesus Lover of My Soul, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, and the hymn we're singing today, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Charles Wesley was the 18th of the 19 children born to Samuel and Susanna Wesley. He was born prematurely in December 1707 and appeared dead. His mother wrapped him in wool and he lay silent for weeks until one day he just woke up. When older, he joined his siblings each day as Susanna, who knew Greek, Latin and French, methodically taught them for six hours. Later, he went to Oxford, where he studied for nine years, receiving his master's degree. It was there, frustrated by what he perceived as a lack of spirituality in the school, that he formed the Holy Club and with two or three others celebrated communion weekly and had daily Bible study. They also instituted a prison ministry. Their members were given the sobriquet Methodists. After graduation, Charles joined his brother John as an itinerant preacher. Their preaching was done outside of church buildings and attracted huge crowds. While John was the better speaker, it was said of Charles that he had the soul of a poet, which he poured into the close to 6,000 verses he penned. On a trip to Wales in 1747, the 40-year-old met 20-year-old Sally Gwynne 
and was immediately smitten. But her parents were concerned that an itinerant preacher wouldn't have a regular income to support a family. To allay their fears, Charles agreed to publish two volumes of his hymns and sacred poems. The income from royalties satisfied Sally's parents and the marriage took place in 1749. He traveled the country on horseback, but he also carried in his pocket slips of paper so that when an idea for a poem or hymn came, he would stop and commit it to paper. Few others have left such a legacy for believers. Enjoy this hymn, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. My daughter asked me the other day about my bracelet and I thought it was a good thing to share with all of you at home also. So this is a bracelet that I picked up. It's the Christian Farmers of Ontario bracelet. I picked it up at a local fair. I have gathered many things over the years of this. I have a necklace with it on and I also have learned it when I was going to Sunday school when I was young and I went to a summer camp when I was a little girl and it was a Christian summer camp so um, and I learned it there also but it's a wonderful message for kids um, the black represents sin so the passage that goes along with that is Romans 3 23 which says that for everyone has sinned we all fall short of the God's glorious standard and we do fall short of God's glorious standard we try really hard I'm sure all of you try really hard not to sin but you know unfortunately we all are sinners that's just what we are, right? We try our best to be and live in the glory of God, but sometimes we fall short, and that does happen, right? Um, and then the next one after that is red, um, and this represents Christ's blood. So the passage that goes along with that is Romans 5, 8, and it says, But God commandeth his love towards us, in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we know that red usually represents Christ's blood, and we know that it was shed for us. So even though we are sinning, you know, and we are sinners, we don't have to worry because, you know, God died for us, right? Died for our sins, right? Christ died for our sins. 
So that's the next one. So the next color after that is the white. And this represents purity. Whenever you see white or when you see that sort of stuff, you, you think of clean and pure and, um, and it's all about being forgiven. So the passage that goes along that is Isaiah 118. And it says, come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Through your sins are like scarlet, though your sins are like scarlet, shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they she shall be like wool. So even though we are sinners, we, Christ shed his blood for us so that we can be forgiven, which is great. And the next color after that usually is blue. So I have a lot of the bracelets and stuff that I've gathered over the years, and the next color is usually blue. On this bracelet, it doesn't have blue. But the one that goes with blue and the passage that goes with blue is usually the baptism. So blue usually is a symbol of water and purity and all that kind of stuff. So it's the passage that goes is Acts 2.41. So it says, so those, who were accept so those who accepted his message were baptized that day. About 3,000 people were added to them. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. So even though we're sinners, we that Christ shed his blood for us so that we could be forgiven. And then to do that, we become clean and we become pure by the baptism. Then the next color after that would be the green. So the green represents growth. So in 2 Peter 3.18 is the passage that goes along with this. It says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. So even though we're sinners, Christ shared, you know, he, he, he spilled his blood for us so that we could be forgiven and become pure by baptism. And the way we do it is by, you know, learning about God and learning about each other and learning about everything, you know, and we have to have the knowledge of our Lord in order to grow and grow closer to, to God, right? And then the last one is the yellow. Sometimes on bracelets, it's gold. Sometimes it's yellow. Sometimes I've seen it multitude of different colors. But what it's supposed to represent is eternal life. So in John 3.16, that's the passage that goes with it. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So even though we are sinners... Jesus shed his blood for us so that we could be forgiven, so that we could, through baptism, become pure. We could grow closer to him to have eternal life. So I always thought that that was a really neat little thing, you know, and it's a great reminder of what the Christian message is. You know, what, you know, when we go to church, it, it's just a good reminder, you know, of you know, even though things sometimes aren't always good and we sin, you know, that we can still be forgiven and we can still, you know, have eternal life. And I just think that's a great thing. So anyways, I hope you liked my my bracelet and uh, I hope everyone have, is having a great day and then I'll see you soon.
Mount of God's unfailing love. Here I pause in my sojourning, giving thanks for having come, come to trust at every turning. God will guide me safely home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God came to rescue me from danger. Precious presence, precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily I am drawn anew let that grace now like a fetter on my wandering heart to you prone to wander I can feel it wander from the love I've known here's my heart Take and seal it, seal it for your very own. Come, thou font of every blessing, to my heart to sing your grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of endless grace. Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of God's unfailing love Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of God's unfailing love Lord God of our salvation, it is your will that all people might come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of the resurrection. We pray in his name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.